Hello everyone, welcome to automation community. Today in this video, we are going to discuss an example in which we will control three motors using three toggle switches. So let's start. PLC example three. We have three toggle switches and three motors. If any one toggle switch is on, then motor 1 will be on. If any two toggle switches are on, then motor 2 will be on. If all the three switches are on, then motor 3 will be on. That means, if only one switch is on, then motor 1 will be on. That means, if switch 1 is on and other two switches are off, then motor 1 will be on. If switch 2 is on, and other two motor, other two, if switch two is on and other two switches are off, then motor one will be on. If switch three is on and other two motors are off, other two switches are off, then motor one will be on. And then, if two switches are on and the third one is off, then motor two will be on. And if all the three switches are on, then motor three will be on. So, for this example, we'll use normally open contacts and normally close contacts. So let's move to code research where we will draw a ladder diagram for this example. I will open code research here. Let's create a new project. Let's select the template as standard project and name as example. Okay. After that, we need to select ladder logic diagram and then click on OK. Double click on PR, PLC PRG and here we will draw the ladder diagram. So, firstly, we will insert a normally open contact here. So, this will be toggle switch 1, switch 1. So, if switch 1 is on, then then here switch 2 and switch 3 should be off. So, we will insert one more normally close contact here. So, this will be switch 2 and then this will be switch And then we will insert a coil. This will be motor 1. So if switch 1 is on, switch 2 is off, switch 3 is off, then the signal will pass through this. As a result, this motor 1 will be on. Similarly, when Switch 2 is on and switch 1 and switch 3 should be off. So, we'll use two more normally close contacts here. So, this will be switch 1 and this will be This will be switch 3. So if switch 2 is on, then switch 1 and switch 3 should be off, then only motor 1 will be on. Then we need to connect here switch 1, switch 2 and switch 3 again here. So for that, I will show you a trick here. So we need to select all these switches here, switch 1, switch 2 and switch 3 and then insert a normally open contact in parallel. So this will be switch 3. So if switch 3 is on, then switch 1 and switch 2 should be off. So we'll use two normally close contacts here. So this will be switch 1 and This will be switch 2. 
So for motor 1 to be on, only one switch should be on. Either switch 1 or switch 2 or switch 3 should be on and other two switches should be off. If switch 1 is on, switch 2 and switch 3 should be off. If switch 2 is on, switch 1 and switch 3 should be off. If switch 3 is on, switch 1 and switch 2 should be off. So when switch 1 is on, the, car, uh, the, uh, the signal will pass through this and then the signal will pass through this only if when these two switches are in false state because we have used two normally closed contacts here to pass the signal from here these two normally closed contacts should mean false state similarly when switch 2 is off the signal should pass through this so for this switch 1 and switch 3 should be off similarly when switch 3 is on the signal should be passed from here so for that switch 1 and switch 2 should be off after that we will insert a network below and here we'll insert a normally open contact here and this will be switch 1 and then we will so we need to turn on motor 2 so for, for motor 2 to be on two inputs should be on only two inputs should be on so we will insert one more normally open contact here so I will click here and then add a normally open contact. So this will be switch 2. So if switch 1 and switch 2 and are on, then switch 3 should be off. So we'll use normally close contact here and this will be switch 3. So switch 3 should be on, then the output will be on. Then what will be on? Motor 2 will be on. So this will be motor 2. Similarly, here we have used two switches, switch 1 and switch 2. Similarly, switch 2, if switch 2 and switch 3 are on and switch 3 is, uh, switch, uh, switch 1 and switch 3 are on and switch 2 is off, then also motor 2 will be on. So we will select these two normally open contacts and then insert contact parallel. So this will be switch 1. If switch 1 and switch 3 are on, so this will be switch 3 are on and with that switch 2 should be on. So we'll use normally close contact here and this will be switch 2. So switch 2 should be on and similarly we will select all these contacts and insert contact in parallel. Sorry. We will select all these and then insert a normally open contact in parallel. So this will be so this will be switch two and then we will insert one more contact and a normally closed contact. So this will be switch 3, so switch 2 and switch 3 are on and switch 1 should be off. Then only motor 2 will be on. And then we will insert one more network below here. So when all the three switches are on, then motor 3 will be on. So in this case, we will use three contacts in series and a coil. So for motor 3, the ladder diagram is very simple. So this is switch 1. Then we have switch 2. Then we have switch 3. And then this is motor 3. So let's generate the code here. Let's go online after clicking on simulation. Login. Yes. Start. So as you can see here.
So all the three motors are off. All the three motors are off. So to turn on the motor one, we need to turn on switch one. We'll debug it and write values. You can see motor one gets on. So we will turn off switch one and turn on switch two. Let's debug it. And you can see motor one is also on. And then let's turn off switch two and turn on switch three. And you can see motor one is on. So when we turn on only one switch, motor one gets on. And if we turn on, if we turn on switch one and switch two, then the motor one gets off, but motor two gets on. So for motor one to be on, only one input should be on and other two inputs should be off. But for motor two, at least two inputs should be on, not at least, only two inputs should be on and the third one should be off. Then motor two will be on. So when we turn on motor, uh, sorry, switch one, toggle switch one and toggle switch two, motor two gets on. And if we turn on switch one and switch three only, then also motor 2 gets on. And then when we turn on switch 2 and switch 3 and turn off switch 1, then also motor 2 remains on. And when we turn on switch 1 as well, when we turn on all the three switches, then motor 2 gets off, but motor 3 gets on. That was all about this example. Thank you for watching.